And these fractions are going to have slightly larger numbers, so we won't be able to use the magnets, but that's okay because we know what we're doing now. Here we have 8 30 seconds. Now, we're going to do this one two ways. The first way is we're going to recognize, uh, hey, this is an even number, and this is an even number, so we know that we can divide by 2. So let's go and take 8 30 seconds, and let's go and divide by 2 on the top and 2 on the bottom. Because we're dividing on the top and the bottom, the number doesn't, or the fraction value doesn't change, of course. So what is 8 divided by 2? That is 4. What is 32 divided by 2? Now that might be a little harder for you to know in your mind. You might have to go off to the side and divide that. What you're going to find is when you divide this, the answer is 16, because 16 times 2 is 32. All right, so then you can look at this, and you could divide by 2 again because they're both even, but then you recognize uh, straight away that you could divide by 4 on the top and 4 on the bottom. So in general, if you pick the largest thing that you can divide by, the largest factor, that's what we learned about the greatest common factor, if you divide by the largest factor, then you're going to have fewer steps. So we could divide by 2, and you would, get, you would have to do it twice. But here we see and recognize that we can just divide by 4. So 4 sixteenths, what do we do? Divide the top by 4, divide the bottom by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 16 divided by 4 is 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. So the answer here is actually 1 fourth. Now I want to uh, show you, or, or kind of like point out to you, that this is totally fine doing it this way, but let's solve this one uh, a different way. Is there something better that we can divide by? We notice we have an 8 and a 32, and we know that 8 times 4 is 32. So we can actually, if we were to think about it, we can divide the top by 8 and the bottom by 8 straight away. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 32 divided by 8 is 4, because 4 times 8 is 32. So you see, you get the same answer. And notice how when we divided by the largest number that is common to both, in other words, the largest factor, in other words, the greatest common factor, right? Then uh, we divide by uh, only one time and we get to the answer. When we divide by smaller numbers, we still get to the final answer, but we might have to do it multiple times, and that is totally okay. So when you're trying to simplify a fraction, if, if, if you don't see the best number to divide by, that's okay. Just, just pick, if it's even, divide by two or something, to start to cut it down. If you happen to see the larger number here, then go ahead and do that. So as we simplify fractions, there's more than one way to get to the final answer. All right, what do we have here? Uh, next problem, 18, 36, 18 36. What do we divide by? Well, I know that 9 times 2 is 18, and I know that 9 times uh, 4 is 36, so I can divide both by 9, right? But there are other choices here. You see, I can divide this by 2 because it's an even number, and this is, I can divide by 2 again, which is an even number. Actually, I can also divide by 6 because dividing by 6, 6 times uh, 3 is 18, and 6 times 6 is 36. So just by thinking through it, I immediately recognize we can divide by 2, we can divide by 3, we can divide by 6, and then I also just realized we can divide by 9. Now, you can divide by whatever you want, but it, it, if it, the, the, uh, you may have to do the process multiple times if you don't, don't divide by the largest factor that is uh, common between the two. So don't stress out too much about what to write about. Just choose the largest thing that you know is in common or the largest factor that you can see. And when I looked at this, I just happened to realize I could divide this by 9 and divide this also by 9. 18 divided by 9 is 2, and 16, uh, 36 divided by 9 is 4, because 4 times 9 is 36. Now when we get to this step, we recognize immediately that this is not simplified because they're both even numbers, so I can divide them both by 2. So 2 fourths, I can divide the top by 2 and the bottom by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So actually the answer is 1 half. So we had to go through two division process here to get to the final answer, and this is okay. Um, if we were to divide by two initially, we would have to do it a bunch more times. Uh, if we were to divide by six and so on, it would be a different number of times. Actually, we know that because it took twice anyway, we know that there must be a bigger factor we could divide by. What do you think that could be? And it's, this is something that's gonna be hard for us to know, be, you know because we're not, all, uh, we're not human calculators. But you could have divided the top by 18 
and the bottom also by 18 because 18 divided by 18 is one. And if you work it out, 36 divided by 18 is two. So you would get divide by 18 to get one, divide by 18 down here, you would get two. But I don't look at this and know off the top of my head I'd divide by 18. I don't think most people would. So just pick the thing that you know and then go from there. That's all I'm, that's all I'm basically saying. All right, let's move along to problem number three. Let's take a look at six twenty-fourths. What could we divide by? Well, these are both even numbers. I could divide top and bottom by two. But you try to think to yourself, is there anything bigger that I know I could divide by? Right? Well, I know that I could divide this by six, and I know I could divide this by six. Why? Because six times four is twenty-four. So I'm going to choose to divide this by six. So I'll take it out, extend this guy out, and I'll divide the top by six, and I'll divide the bottom by six. Six divided by six is one, and 24 divided by six is four, and so the answer is one-fourth. And there is no uh, further simplifying I can do here because I cannot divide top and bottom by, uh, 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 by anything further to make that any simpler. So notice it only took one step, and the reason it only took one step is because I divided by the largest, I, I call it the largest thing, common between the two, but really the right word is it's the largest factor. Remember we did the greatest common factor. We write the factors of this and the factors of this and the biggest one that's common. That is going to be always the best thing to simplify your fraction by. But you may not realize just by looking at this that you should divide by six. That's okay. You would divide by two you would get an answer and then you would have to divide again because you wouldn't be able to simplify it further, but you'll always get to the same answer no matter what you divide by as long as you're doing the math correctly. All right, so the answer to that was one fourth. Let's take a look at 25 uh, thirtieths. Now this is easy because anything that ends in five or zero, you know it's divisible by five. So we're gonna divide this by five, 25 thirtieths. We'll divide the top by five and the bottom by five. 25 divided by five is five because five times five is 25. 30 divided by five is six because six times five is 30. And the answer is five six. And I cannot divide this any further. So that is fully simplified. Five six is the fully simplified version. All right, next problem. 28, uh, 36, 28, 36. Now, there is almost certainly a larger factor that I could divide by that would work. But the, the one that jumps out at me immediately is that this is an even number and this is also an even number. So I'm just gonna do that because I could write all the factors and I could try to find the greatest common factor and divide by that, but you know that takes a lot of work also. So I just think we should start with 28, because we know it's even, and 36, because we know it's even, and just divide by two. All right, so what do we get? 28 divided by two. Now, if you go off to the side and do 28 divided by two, you'll get an answer of 14. And 36 divided by two. When we go off to the side there, you'll get an answer of 18. And if you're not sure how to do these divisions, 28 divided by two is 14, and 36 divided by two is 18, then I encourage you to go back and review the lessons that we've already done in division, because we've done that so many times. If I do every single division all the time, then it's going to get cumbersome. So this is a very simple division, get 14. This is a very simple division, get 18. So now we have something that is also an even number, right? So let's do the same process again. We'll just say 14 eighteenths. And we're going to divide the top and bottom again by two. All right, 14 divided by two is seven because seven times two is 14. 18 divided by two is nine because nine times two is 18. And the answer is seven ninths. Now this one cannot be simplified any further uh, uh, is either uh, because uh, there's nothing I can divide top and bottom by here to make it any simpler. So that's the final answer to that problem. All right, so let's go over here and take a look at 64, 70, 70 seconds. We see it's an even number and an even number. Of course, I could find the greatest common factor and all that stuff, you could do that. But Honestly, if it's even, just divide by two. It's gonna be so much faster. So just write down here 64 and 72. And we're going to divide the top and the bottom by two. Now, I said that I'm not gonna do every single division and I'm not, but occasionally I will. So let's take 64 divided by two. Two times what is six? Two times three is six, so multiply, six, subtract, get a zero, drag the four down, 
and 2 times what is 4? 2 times 2 is 4. And so you multiply, you get a 4, subtract, remainder is 0. So the answer to 64 divided by 2 is 32. So we put a 32 here. All right, now what is 72 divided by 2? We'll go down here. 72 divided by 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Subtract, get a 1. Drag that 2 down for a 12. 2 times what is 12? 2 times 6 is 12. Multiply and get a remainder of 0. So the answer is 36 down here. So 36 on, 32 on the top, 36 on the bottom. Now, I'm not sure what to do exactly, but I know that these are also even numbers. So let me write 32 over 36. And I'll divide the top by 2 and the bottom by 2. And it's the same process. I could go do 32 divided by 2. You're going to get an answer of 16. And 36 divided by 2, you're going to get an answer of 18. Okay, so now 16 18 but they're still both even. I can still do this again. So 16 divided by 18. Right, 16 divided by 18. They're both even, so let's go ahead and divide by 2 again. What do I get? 16 divided by 2 is 8, and 18 divided by 2 is 9. And 8 ninths is as far as I can go. Now, the, the fact that I had to do this a couple of times just means that there was a larger factor here that I could have divided by uh, to just do the process in one answer. But none of us are human calculators. None of us are going to look at that and just know, oh yeah, that's I can divide by you know 24 or something. None of us are going to know that. So what I think you should do is if it's even, just divide by two, just keep going down by two and you'll eventually get down to the final answer. All right, let's take a look at the following. What about 49 uh, 60 thirds? Now this one looks weird. And you might think, oh, maybe I'll divide by 3 or something like that. But then you think through your multiplication tables. I can divide this by 7 because 7 times 7 is 49. And I can divide this by 7 uh, because 9 times 7 is actually 63. So it might take you some time to figure out that I could divide by 7, but that is what we're going to need to do. So let's go divide uh, by both of these by 7. Okay. 49 divided by 7 is 7, because 7 times 7 is 49, and 63 divided by 7 is 9, because 9 times 7 is 63. And I can't go any further with this one, because it's fully simplified. I can't, I can't divide top and bottom of that by anything to make it simpler. All right, what about 22 64ths? 22 64ths. All right, same thing, even number. I'm not really sure the largest thing I can divide by, but I know I can divide by two. So let's go ahead and take 22 60 fourths, and we'll divide the top and bottom by two, by two. All right, so you can go off to the side, but you might also remember that 22 divided by two is 11, because 11 times two is 22. And then 64 divided by two, we actually just did that a minute ago. Thing. Yeah, 64 divided by 2, that's 32. So you can go off to the side and do that math, and you get a 32 down here. 11 30 seconds. Can we simplify that? Answer is no. I cannot divide top and bottom by anything to make that any simpler, so that's actually the final answer. All right, almost done. Only two more problems. What about uh, 42 over 62? 42 over 62. We see that it's both an even number, so we're going to divide top and bottom by 2. And again, I said I wouldn't do this every time, but let's go ahead and do it here. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Let's go ahead and take 42 and divide by 2. 2 times what is 4? 2 times 2 is 4. Multiply, subtract, grab the next digit. We have a 2 down there. 2 times 1 is 2, so we multiply and we get a remainder of 0. So when we divide these, we get an answer of 21. Now what is 62 divided by 2? We'll go 62 divided by uh, 2. 2 times 3 is 6, so we multiply, subtract, 0. Drag the 2 down. 2 times 1 is 2. Subtract, get a remainder of 0. So the answer is 31. 21 over 31, and there's nothing I can really divide by to get that any simpler. So that's the final answer. All right, we only have one more problem. Let's take a look at 52 uh, 68s. 52 68s. Okay, same sort of thing. There is, I'm sure, a larger number I can divide by. You can find the greatest common factor and all that, but I 
also know that these are just even numbers. So I'm just going to take 52 and 68, and I'm going to divide the top by 2, and I'll divide the bottom by 2. All right. Now, when you go off to the side, again, I, did, I said I wouldn't do it for every problem, so we did it for the last one. We're not going to do it for here. When you take 52 and you divide by 2, you'll get an answer of 26. And when you take 68 and divide by 2 over off to the side of your paper, you'll get 34. So 26 over 34. These are, again, also even numbers. So we'll divide by 2 again. 26, 34. We'll divide by 2, divide by 2. All right, and then go off to the side, 26 over two, you're gonna an answer of 13, and 34 divided by two, you get an answer of 17. So 13 17 And if you're not sure about that, like I said, we'll do it for some of them, but not the other, not every one. 26 over two, two times one is two, subtract, get a zero, drag the six. Two times three is six, multiply six, and we get a remainder of zero. So the answer was 13. And then the final part here, we'll do this last one, 34, We'll divide by two. Two times one is two is as close as I can get. Get a, a, a one here, and then we drag the four down. Two times what is 14? Two times seven is 14, and remainder of zero. So 17 goes on the bottom. Now this one, we can't do any further because there's nothing I can divide by here. So you see a lot of these problems basically boil down to dividing by two over and over again. And there are other ways to do these problems. You could find the greatest common factor and divide only one time, but see, by the time you find the greatest common factor, you spent a ton of time doing that. Just try to save time on dividing. I don't think it's a good use of time. I think it's faster just to go and just do the division and, and just and just get, get to the answer quicker than to find a bunch of greatest common factor trees and all this other stuff. Because let me tell you, to find all the factors of 68 is gonna actually take quite a bit of time. And to find all the factors of 52 will take time too. And then you have to find the greatest one that's common between them, and then you have to simplify, and then you'll still have to divide. You'll still have to do some division. It's just gonna be easier to do it this way. If you see that they're even, just keep dividing by two, unless you get to a point, like we did a couple of times here, where we can tell that we can divide by six because we know six times four is 24, for instance. All right, so now you have conquered the idea of simplifying fractions. I'd like you to master this, solve all of these problems, get all the right answers. When you feel like you're doing well, follow me on to the next problem set, the next topic, where we'll learn how to simplify a mixed number. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.